Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So today's video is going to be part two of our dupe fragrance company unboxing and out of the bottle first impressions. So they set a total of I believe 22 different oils and in part one we reviewed uh, 12 of those and there's a whole bunch more to do in this video as well so if you are new here consider subscribing I am always posting candle business related content and fragrance videos are my absolute favorite to film but anyways let's get right into this video and I hope that you enjoy I'm gonna have my part one linked above. For those of you who didn't watch it, I would definitely recommend checking out that one first, just so that way you can get kind of an overview on the company and um, all that good information. But I'm gonna just jump right in here. And I do um, always recommend doing your own testing though, um, because fragrance is gonna be very subjective. And this video is just gonna be my out of the bottle first impressions. So you do always wanna do your own testing and also test them in a final product before you have any final opinions. But I know these videos are really fun to film and I know you all really enjoy them. So um, I just like to put that disclaimer out just in case um, we have new people watching. Um, but this first one here is called Sea Glass by Dupe and I have no idea um, what this is gonna be. I will have the notes put on the screen, the little descriptions, but I have not consulted those prior to this video. So I'm expecting something that's gonna be ozonic, maybe earthy, maybe like an ocean. And yes, yes, and yes. Okay, this is definitely like a luxury ozonic fragrance. You definitely get a prominent sea salt note to this one, kind of a brine type of a note, but it's very elevated. It's almost like if you combined that with like the best version of a Petrichor fragrance. Um, wow, yeah, I haven't smelled anything that is quite like this. It is along the lines of like High Tide, I would say, by Candle Science, but it's definitely more of a luxury version. It has more of a sophisticated linen accord to it, and Gosh, almost like a petrichor type of a note. Like it's like the sea after it's just stormed. Um, and I'm like looking at the rocks and it, you can see like the water on the rocks after there's been a big storm and the ocean has been all churned up. Um, oh my God, and I already whacked myself on the face with a cap. All right, let's take a look at this matcha latte. And matcha is one of those that I just don't know why so many companies put it into fragrances. I think that it works, but it's also a note that you really have to do um, well. I think it's it goes well paired with a lot of citrusy type notes because by itself it can be very drying and, and almost like pungent. So hopefully this matcha latte is balanced out and you get the matcha, but not and yes, yes, and yes. Oh my God, and I almost whacked myself in the face again. This is really prominent too, out of the bottle. And surprisingly, you do get a very prominent matcha note. But the matcha is balanced with like a cream, almost like a buttercream type of a note. I'm not getting any citruses really in this one. I'm getting more of a rich, decadent matcha, like the name suggests, uh, like a latte. It's almost like a buttery whipped cream type of an accord and it's very like sophisticated smelling i don't think this one i think this one could be very polarizing um but if you like those gourmand type of um sophisticated scents this is like you're walking into a french bakery and you are looking at all the beautiful macarons and they have a matcha macaron this is everything that i could want for a baked matcha type of a scent. And I'm so surprised that the matcha note is this prominent, but it's also not obtrusive. Okay, next up, let's take a look at, while we're doing gourmands, this Italian, uh, I believe it's pronounced Pignoli cookies. Um, I am expecting a gourmet type of a cookie. I feel like I should know what that is, given that I have a lot of Italian blood and I basically grew up on Italian food, but, I have no idea. I have not had one of those particular types of cookies. So let's see what Italian Pignoli cookies is gonna do for us. Oh my God. Okay, oh my God. 
Okay, so this has to be one of my favorite oils that I've smelled so far by this company. Wow, wow, and wow. Okay, this reminds me of 1617's latest gourmand fragrance. I'll put the name up on the screen, but it has that almond amaretto accord to it. Oh my gosh, but it's like a bourbon type of a note, like a cookie, but you definitely get like a rich luxe vanilla and a bourbon and an almond amaretto all at once. Oh my God, this takes me straight to Italy. Oh my gosh, I am getting chills. I think this, this is probably my favorite oil I've smelled so far. This has to be one of my favorite oils that I've reviewed out of the bottle by any company. Oh my gosh. So if you're looking for that gourmand fragrance that is going to be elevated, but it's going to actually smell like a cookie, but be the most elevated type of cookie with the bourbon, with the um, like rich vanilla bean type of notes. And then that almond amaretto, almost like with a little bit of cherry to it. Wow, wow, and wow. Okay, I had to cool off after that one because so far, these first three fragrances, and you all know, like I am, I can be very critical on this channel of fragrances. I give my honest opinion for better or for worse, and I am blown away by this part two so far. Uh, let's take a look. Oh wow, we've got a lot of gourmands, and, and again, these are very difficult to do. Uh, let's take a look at this oob or ubi macaroon macaron, I think is the correct pronunciation. Um, while we're doing gourmands, let's just take a look at this one. And I'm expecting something similar actually to the one that I just smelled or to the matcha and bergamot, but, or not the matcha and bergamot, the uh, matcha latte, but with maybe less of an astringent or a uh, kind of pungent matcha note, which that one didn't have, but I'm expecting something that's even more smooth with this one, kind of like that baked aesthetic. Hmm. Yeah, this one's very buttery. This one is very buttery. So this smells like I just walked into a bakery and they are baking macarons. I'm getting a sweet note, but not a sweet sugary note. It's more of a sweet buttery note, like a rich, almost like a butter pecan type of a note to this one. Um, this actually reminds me of, I drink a loose leaf tea that is called chocolate macadamia coconut cream and it's by Chocolate Tea. It's a uh, gourmet tea place that's by my house and it's a loose leaf and I absolutely love it. I drink it every day, but this fragrance smells almost to a tea, <laughs> pun intended, like that um, beverage. And I like it, but it's also something that could be too much for me personally. It might be something that I would blend down. Okay, let's take a look at this velvet persimmon now. Persimmon is definitely one of those notes that, um, it's definitely one of those notes that not a lot of people are familiar with. It's kind of more of a bitter, almost um, type of a citrus note. And it's definitely an old world note too, that I really like. It, it, it kind of speaks to my, my old soul type of a heart. Um, but this is Velvet Persimmon. I'm expecting something citrusy, but hopefully high end. Oh my God, you guys, oh my gosh. <sighs> this fragrance, okay, so this is exactly to a T what the name suggests. You get the persimmon notes, but you guys, you just have to smell this oil. You literally just have to smell this oil. If you are looking for a high-end exotic citrus type of a note, but that is also like old world. And it almost, oh, it, it's chilling. It's so good. I have gotten chills from like three of these fragrances and, and that rarely ever happens for those of you who have watched my channel for any amount of time. It takes a lot when you've smelled hundreds and hundreds of oils to really be blown away. I don't know how I haven't tried this company before now because I am blown away by a lot of these oils. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is really prominent too out of the bottle. So it's like a smooth type of a, you do get the citrus notes, like the bitter kind of citrusy 
notes, but it's a really warm, like honeyed persimmon almost. And maybe that's where the velvet comes in the name, but it almost is like has like a bourbon honey type of an accord. And this is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm purchasing luxury marketed fragrances. And their price points for luxury marketed oils are pretty good um, too. Like they're not charging. They're definitely more than like your flaming candle, candle science type of price points, but they're, they're very reasonable. Um, so if these throw well in candles, and I will be testing a lot of these oils in candles, um, again, probably with the Soy Bliss or some type of a designer wax, maybe Cocoa Apricot, um, leave me a comment uh, what you would like me to test these in. I think I'll probably do either Cocoa Apricot Cream or Soy Bliss. Okay, let's take a look at this Treehouse fragrance. And this is a really interesting name to me. I'm expecting something maybe oak moss, maybe some amber to it, maybe something that is earthy in a woodsy type of a way. Um, I wanna be transported. So let's see what Treehouse by Dupe is gonna do. Hmm. Okay, this is not what I was expecting. This has a very prominent kind of peppery note to it almost out of the bottle, almost like a, there's something though that I'm getting that I'm, it's competing with the fragrance out of the bottle. Yeah, it's almost got like a black pepper note to it. I'm intrigued with this one. I'm concerned about how light it is out of the bottle though. And yeah, there's something in this one that is just competing with the fragrance. And I could very well like this in a burning candle, but just out of the bottle, it's hard for me to kind of decipher. I think that I'm definitely getting an oak moss note to this. I'm getting something earthy. I'm getting some woodsy, some cedars, some sandalwood. Um, but I, it's that peppery note that's coming through on the blotter strip. It's almost like a bayberry or like an oak type of a, it's more of a bayberry type of a note um, that I like but it's going to, my opinion of this one is definitely um, kind of up in the air at this point and I wanna like it, but there's something, oh my God, I just whacked myself again. There's something competing with this one. Next up, let's take a look at this butterfly tea latte. Butterfly pea, I'm sorry, latte. Really intrigued by the name. I tried to make a fragrance called Spill the Tea and it was a blend of lemon pound cake and one other fragrance. Um, I usually have it in my summer collection. And butterfly tea latte just kind of sounds like I would be out in a garden almost like having a tea and an elevated pastry in the middle of like a flower garden and like I'm in a gazebo, that type of a vibe. Oh yes. Yes and yes. Okay, this smells to a T like something I've smelled before. Whatever this dupe is, I know what the original is. I just can't pinpoint without looking at the notes where this one is coming from. Okay, this is definitely, I'm getting a prominent like honeysuckle note, prominent jasmine note. Oh, this is intoxicating. This is one, and again, I'm not usually a floral fan. This one could be polarizing if you don't normally like florals. It's definitely got a heady floral note to it, but it's like, you just keep wanting to smell it. Like I could just keep going back to this one and just, it has like a sweetness to it as well. Like there is almost some lemon in there, but it's like that honeysuckle note that it keeps bringing me back to this one. Yeah, there's just a sweetness to it. It's. Oh my gosh, I, I really like this oil. The more I smell it, the more I can't stop smelling it. I'm just like, I'm gonna start hyperventilating here. Let's take a look at this Spanish tuberose. Now, I really love tuberose fragrances. Uh, Candle Science has one called Gardenia tuberose that I absolutely adore. And I do mix that with some other oils just to tone down the floral qualities a little bit, but I'm expecting, my expectations have raised even higher with this company just because of what they've been delivering so far. So I'm expecting something to blow me out of the water basically that has that floral quality to it, but it's just like a designer type of uh, perfume. And yeah. Okay, this is along the lines of, if you have smelled Cashmere by Nature's Garden, it's along the lines of that fragrance blended with uh, tuberose. And this one is surprisingly coming off lighter out of the bottle though, and I'm a little concerned about that um, and surprised by it because usually florals are very prominent out of the bottle 
and this one is, to my nose, a little bit lighter. Well, the more I smell it though, it's kind of not. Um, but yeah, this is almost like a more androgynous uh, type of a floral. It almost reminds me of if you took um, Cashmere by Nature's Garden and blended it with Nature's Garden's Amber Waters. Um, kind of like something like that, blended with Candle Science's um, Gardenia Tuberose. I really like this. And the more I smell it, it is coming off stronger. Wow. Yeah, I'm really curious how this will throw in a candle. All right, next up, let's take a look at this New York, actually, let's save this one for last. This is the one I'm most excited for, the New York City rain. So we're gonna save that one. Oh yeah, and the French Riviera. Let's take a look at this flower head. And I'm kind of scared for this one because usually things that are florally, like with a name like that, I, I'm probably gonna be highly critical. And by the way, these bottles seem to be filled more than two ounces because almost every single bottle, I don't think you can see it, but they're filled like to the brim. And most companies fill fragrances by weight, but these seem like they're filled by volume, which, you know, you'll if that's true, you'll end up probably getting more oil with some of these. But, oh, okay, this is not bad at all, actually. This is very floral, but it's also very herbal, apothecary type of a fragrance. Um, oh yeah, okay, so this is along the lines of, if you have tried, um, Oh, it reminds me of a lot of things by Makesy, actually. Um, they have an infused yarrow buds and guayac wood. It's kind of like that, except it is more of a fresh floral. Um, this is in, this really tells a story though. <sighs> I am shocked that I like this as much as I do. Okay, so I'm picking out like lots of different flowers. I'm definitely getting like some dewy, like some blue chamomile and some sort of like daisies or lilies or something with this one. Uh, but it just smells like wildflowers to me. Like you're out in the woods and you are on a walk in the springtime in the woods and you're just like the breeze is coming through the trees and you are looking at all the beautiful wildflowers and there's bits of dew on some of them. Just like that enchanted springtime forest type of a vibe. Let's take a look at this raspberry blossom. Come on now, you can't impress me with everything. So this one I feel like I'm not gonna like very much because usually these type of raspberry fragrances, I wanna not like something basically. Like I, I wanna not like something because this is getting a little ridiculous. Um, well, I didn't care for their leather fragrance in my last video and then there was maybe one or two other ones but most of these fragrances I am like not even neutral on. I'm like, in this one I can smell from about a foot away and I don't know that I will like it. And yeah. Okay, so this one's not for me, but this one I could see being very popular. Um, <laughs> this is your kind of, if you like white grapefruit aside by Stone Candles, this is a very bubbly, if you like those type of rose quartz fragrances, um, you know, those types of crystal fragrances, what they will call them sometimes. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, ras a raspberry blossom in a sense of it being a bubbly raspberry. So it's not a true to life raspberry in my opinion, but it's definitely a bubbly kind of um, interpretation of a raspberry that it's not my cup of tea at all, but I could see a lot of people really liking it. And I think that this oil would actually be more popular than maybe some of the other ones that I said that I really liked. It's just not my type of a fragrance at all. Um, to me, it smells like a sort of, it'd be really good in soap probably, but sort of those types of maybe something Victoria's Secret would make or some sort of, I mean, if Love Spell had a sister, like that type of a fragrance. Um, okay, so finally we got something that wasn't for me, um, but let's see what this next one is gonna do. So this is the Stone Fruit and that sounds very rustic to me. I'm curious, just by the name, what stone fruit could mean. Like for something maybe like taking me to Italy or to Europe. Hmm, this is subtle. Okay, I like it, but I want more of it. It's really pretty. Um, it's, it's a quaint, uh, picturesque type of 
floral, but also fruit. It's kind of like a Tuscany vibe almost. I don't really get plum, but it's kind of like you're sitting in Italy and you're just peering out at the beautiful countryside at sunset and oh my gosh, you're like in a meadow almost. It has a lot of green notes to it. Yeah, I like this. It's not as prominent as I would like out of the bottle, but I really like it. It's a fresh, clean, old world type of a free um, but floral fragrance. For those of you who like fragrances like Cashmere Plum by Candle Science or those kind of textile combined with fruit type of a fragrance, I think that you would probably enjoy this Stone Fruit by Duke Fragrance Co. Okay, so we have two more oils to go. And these are my two that I'm most excited for. Um, by the way, if this video is bringing a smile to your face, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. And I cannot wait to smell. I think I'm gonna start with the French Riviera. And then at the end of the video, I will be choosing some of my personal favorites, which is gonna be really hard to do. I feel like I liked even more from part two than I did from part one of this haul. Um, but this French Riviera, I'm super excited for. I love anything that's supposed to transport me somewhere. I'm really wanting something that is gonna be that high end and that European type of a vibe that takes me right to France. And so let's see what this French Riviera, I feel like this is gonna be earthy. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. You guys, this might be my favorite oil that I've smelled so far. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna smell this again. Wow. Yeah, this is very high end. Yeah, I'm getting a top note of lemon or maybe it's pettigrain or bergamot. It's some type of a bitter citrus. This takes me right to like the Mediterranean. I have made fragrances that are like supposed to be, so my Barcelona scent has that kind of vibe to it. My Antalya scent has that kind of vibe to it. Um, just that Mediterranean, that fresh, breezy, almost briny air, but you're getting those bitter citruses and you're getting those um, green notes, but exotic green notes to it. And then there's such a, I wouldn't blend this with anything. Um, the base to this one is really rich. I'm definitely getting like a sandalwood vetiver and kind of a skanky vetiver, but in the best possible way. Um, it really needs that to kind of just bring down the freshness of some of those really bright citrus notes and just kind of make them seductive. Oh, and I also was getting a kind of like a cassis note to that one as well. Um, like a sort of current or black current type of a note. Last but not least, the oil that I am most excited for and I've been waiting for, to, uh, for this oil to do it for this whole video, New York City Rain. I, New York has a special place in my heart. I lived in New York for a long time and New York City is where I had my bottom surgeries as a transgender dude. So it's kind of, has a really special place for me. And I just cannot wait. This just, the name just tells such a story already. I have no idea what to expect. Maybe something like a Petriker, but also something urban-esque something high-end, something that is going to just take me right down to the streets of Manhattan. Um, so here goes New York City Rain by Dupe. Hmm, this one is coming off light out of the bottle. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna put a little more. Hmm. Yeah, it's very light, unfortunately. I like what I'm getting, but I'm not getting enough of it. Um, I'm definitely getting something that smells like a city after it has just rained. Like I'm getting that wet pavement type of an accord, which I love. It's kind of a variation of a Petriker, but it also is like an urban-esque version. I'm just not getting enough of it. Um, there's a rich base to this one as well, and I do understand that that can bring down the fragrance. Um, overall, but I just wish that this were much more prominent out of the bottle. Okay, so I could not pick three favorites for this video. I had to pick five. Um, so these are my five favorites from part two. 
Um, these are, there were so many good oils too. Um, it was very hard for me to choose, but Butterfly Pea Latte is in my number five. And this one is so, all of these oils, what's in common with them is that they just tell a story. They are so from the heart and just complex. Um, but this one, yeah, it just takes me right into the center of a garden where I am sitting and enjoying my cup of Earl Grey with a pastry at noon and I'm chatting with a friend who is also enjoying a tea with cream and pastry. Um, but I'm smelling the garden with this. The garden coupled with a white sheer woods kind of oak type of an aesthetic almost. And I'm getting the honeysuckle and the jasmine and I'm just getting that really warm, beautiful, sunny floral quality. Um, so that one's in my number five. My number four, oh, this was so hard, but I am putting this velvet persimmon because this one, oh my God, it is so elevated. It is so bougie smelling and complex and exotic. And I'm just like, it's old world exotic. Like I'm taken to like Cancun or Havana Oh, it, it's so beautiful. It's like the persimmon is definitely what sings, but you're also getting, it's like bolstered with all of these guava and coconut and just like passion fruit type of notes. And they're so round and warm and honeyed almost. All right, number three is flower head. I cannot believe that a floral like this is getting put so high for me, but this fragrance, you all, this takes you right into an enchanted forest in the springtime and there are wildflowers. It's like dewy chamomile buds and yarrow and nectar and it's just the most beautiful, like cool spring enchanted forest type of a vibe. And I am just like, it's like where there's trees that are hundred feet tall and you're just walking through the forest and you're on a dirt path and the sun rays are coming through the trees and you're looking at all the beautiful maybells and chamomile blossoms and wildflowers that are growing. Oh my gosh, this flower head takes my number three position hands down. Okay, number two, unsurprisingly, is French Riviera. This oil transports me. My neighbor's mowing the lawn right now, if you all can hear that. Um, we're just gonna have to go with it. But this, this transports me to the Mediterranean. I just am literally, there's no way that you could call this anything other than something extremely exotic and like otherworldly in the Mediterranean. Um, French Riviera, hands down, takes my number two spot. All right, in my number one position, unsurprisingly to all of you, we have Italian Pignoli cookies and you all hear that? This oil, if you are looking for the most luxurious, warm, rich, like amaretto fragrance, this would be really good, I think, in soap too. I would definitely, um, I look forward to, I know that they said their IFRA certificates and their SDS are still pending lab uh, results, but I look forward to seeing their IFRA certificates on a lot of these because I think that many of their oils would be wonderful in soaps and definitely room and linen sprays as well as candles. But this one unquestionably takes my number one position um, for my favorite fragrance from part two. Um, but anyways, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Huge thank you as well to Dupe Fragrance Company for sending me these oils. I'm super excited and I cannot wait to put some of these into some wax and give you all some more feedback on them. Um, if you all are interested in that, definitely leave me a comment. Do you want me to try out some of these in wax um, on YouTube or do you just like the out of the bottle first impressions? Um, leave me a comment down below what you would like to see and leave me a comment of which of these oils you would most like to check out or which fragrances you really love from Dupe Fragrance, uh, from Dupe Fragrance Co. But anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.